This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Super Wild Card Weekend is just a couple of days away now, which means it is time to dive in deep into this slate and break down our favorite bets over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Ryan Williams will join us for today to break down where he is seeing value across this week's six games at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Joined here, as mentioned, by Ryan Williams. Check him out on twitter at ryan alexander underscore w and ryan i feel like your son trevor is good luck because last week here on the show on the thursday show you went five and oh um so you consulted trevor for your wild card weekend bets as well yeah i mean the boy trevor's coming through uh early on uh in in his life so we we appreciate that i think i think we'll keep him jim um no i mean yeah we <laughs> What, what are you doing here? You're going to jinx me before we get into the wild card Sorry. slate here? Yeah, that's fair. I, I think that's <laughs> – if it doesn't go well this week, it's my fault, and I accept Absolutely. that. Um, I'm willing to bear that responsibility. I also will mention that this year I officially made the transition from calling Trevor Simeon touchdown Trevor to Trevor Lawrence, call, calling him touchdown Trevor. I will make okay. that transition to your Trevor if at some point that is needed. I think that he has earned that based on what he did in Week 18. So yeah. – I, it will stay with Trevor Lawrence for now, tentatively, okay. but down the line, I want to let you know that the touchdown Trevor nickname is available for Trevor when when he wants it. What a beautiful thing. I'm going to let him know that uh, each and every day that Uncle Jim said that uh, <laughs> the, the touchdown Trevor moniker is yours to have should you so want it. And I'm then sure he'll end up honored. playing golf. So exactly. I mean, that can count too. you know, right. Birdie Trevor. We'll work on it. Eagle Trevor. We'll, we'll find a way to make this work either way. We're going to talk to Ryan about his thoughts on weekend uh, on the wildcard weekend. Hopefully get Trevor's thoughts as well across the six games for this week. We're not going to break down Bucks Cowboys in depth here. I talked about that a bit on Monday, but also we're back with you on Monday to break down that game more in depth. So we'll talk about the other games here to get you set for wildcard weekend in just a bit. But first a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast as mentioned our wild card weekend first look went up on monday breaking down what my number said about this week's slate we also talked some uh golf and some nba we do more of that throughout the year as we get uh, into the NFL playoffs. So if you want more NBA, PGA discussion, along with the typical NFL stuff, make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. And while you're there, if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. You can also find the show over on the FanDuel YouTube page. For the DFS, NFL Saturday Million is now live on FanDuel. Put your NFL knowledge to the test and create your best nine-player roster while staying under the salary cap. Then using FanDuel's live scoring feature, you can follow along as you compete for your share of $1 million in cash prizes, with first place taking home $200,000 all for just a $5 entry fee. Saturday is coming quickly, so head over to FanDuel.com and get your lineups in today. Eligibility restrictions apply. Go to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel app for more details. Now, we'll talk about the specific games here in a second, but Ryan, first, this is the playoffs, which means, A, we have fewer games to bet on, but also there's more attention on these games, which could mean there's more public money in the market, which could open up some more value, maybe lead to more inefficient lines. There are a couple factors at play here. How do you alter your approach to betting in terms of, you know, how many bets you play, stuff like that, with all these factors being in play? Yeah, I mean, I think you try not to get uh, too ahead of yourself. I mean, you know, the the shorter, the smaller the slate that we have, you know, the more chances there are to be wrong. Um, it's, it's nice that, you know, especially when you're talking about coming off of a week 18, um, or the last week of the season when you have all teams playing uh, and then you have to go into it where, you know, we, we had 16 games and now we're down to six games um, within a particular weekend. So I think just being smart about it um, is it, huge and just letting letting the trends kind of dictate themselves. Um, it is always fun, you know, for if you're talking to the casual betters to have some action on the game. But it's you know, you don't want to go crazy because there's there's only a couple things there. Um, I will say it's a fun week for me or fun weekend for me to always do teasers um mm -hmm. because 
if you're looking at it and you feel like there are line of inefficiencies and we can talk about some of the lines and how drastically they've moved. Um, but, you know, if you're getting in late in the game, like, you know, we're recording at the end of the week, um, some of the lines kind of opened up and those were fun. So if you're not getting on the action early, I think if you're looking at it and still feel like you can get some value in just a couple teasers um, where they're not, you know, they, they don't, they're not always as enticing um, as if you take, you know, the line as it is, uh, but they do make it a fun way to, to still have some action on it. Um, and you, you can get some, you know, five, five to eight to nine to one odds um, based on how, how many points you're teasing. So I think that that's fun, but yeah, I probably will myself um, only have a handful of bets um, that I pick and, and more so on the, you know, a couple bets as it relates to the, the lines and the spreads. Uh, but this is also a fun weekend to get in the player props, which I know that you talk about um, as well during the week. And that's that's where I think the fun action is to be had. Yeah, the teaser thing is interesting because uh, the way that those work is it's actually less prohibitive to bet later on in the week because typically you want to bet early in the week to get the best number, stuff like that. But with a teaser, like with this Bengals Ravens game, if you tease at six points, that's down to two and a half. And the further we get along in the week, the more likely that eight and a half number is correct, which means the more likely it is a lot, it winds up on three or seven. So the benefit of teasing there increases as the market gets smarter, which is actually like kind of weird to think about. I still prefer to bet stuff earlier on in the week, personally, but the value of those key numbers increases as the market gets more efficient, and the market almost always gets more efficient as the week goes along, especially with injury stuff, with Lamar Jackson, Tua Tungavailoa, and all that stuff. So actually, later in the week, it actually is... Um, if I'm going to place a bet later on in the week, it's more my action is more spread into stuff like that than it typically would be because I do tend to I don't tend to do parlays and stuff like that all that much. But later on in the week, I am more likely to do it as a result of the odds those key numbers wind up being important increased with the market being more efficient. Other thing I would say for me at least is don't let the boredom bother you um, because when I ran my numbers on Monday, I saw a couple of bets that stood out and it's like okay. So I could force it with bets that are not going to meet my value threshold for betting them because I want more action. I really don't want to do that uh, because it's really easy to get too bored and to put more in, but I also don't want to lose money. So it's important to kind of keep that in mind. Like, sure, you yeah. could add more action. And if you're paying for entertainment, then that's one thing, you know, you know, going with that, with that being a knowledge. But for me, I'm just, I'm trying to make a profit. So yeah. I'm, Going to try to make sure I stay disciplined. Uh, don't let the boredom get me in terms of not having a lot of numbers where I'm showing value. I think that that's kind of important. Just kind of remind yourself that there are more weeks to come. There are more sports to come yeah. after NFL. There are more NFL seasons to come. Even if you don't get a lot down this week, there is still more stuff to go. So um, I would Absolutely. keep that in mind as well. Absolutely. And if you're going to go all in on a slate, like save, save it for a championship weekend or Super Bowl, like, that, that's yep. when it really, you know, we we all know that it's, everybody's going to be looking at the same things um, and that's all we have to choose from. So uh, that that's if you're going to load up on on anything, that's when you want to load up, especially with the quarterbacks in play this week. Maybe you want to hold yes. off until next week. Let's start things <laughs> off with a game that does not have any quarterback issues, though. That is the Chargers at the Jaguars. The Chargers here are two and a half point favorites. Total is forty seven and a half. And the Chargers, Ryan, I would say are a frustrating team. I don't know if you agree with that. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think they're frustrating. They are two and a half point favorites on the road. Do you agree with the market being this high on the Chargers in this game? Yeah, I mean, uh, no, I, I don't. <laughs> Good, me neither. Yeah, yes, no. um, you know, I think this this is this is one of the this is probably the most intriguing game to me on the slate. Mm -hmm. These I are agree. two teams that you and I both have talked about at nauseum all season long. Um, it is always tough. You, I've, I've said it before. I'll say it again. It is hard to trust the Chargers as favorites in any matchup that they're in. They're the team that likes to play from behind. We know how Brandon Staley is going to coach. Like he, he, he gambles on things a lot. Uh, the defense is, is, is great great on paper um we we love what this defense means when they're fully healthy um but they do take gambles and they do have defensive lapses and this offense for the jaguars has been you know reeling as of late and doug peterson like this is this is not your typical jaguars team like they fought very hard to get this home playoff game they're getting 
two and a half points here, um, which which has you know moved all across the board. I feel like through the week, it it's has. been a one and a half as a pick them. It's been two. Now it's two and a half, and this just leans me to take the jar the Jaguar side of things because it could end up being like. It could end up being a last minute field goal for the Chargers, sure. But like there could be weird things that happen where like the Chargers end up kicking a field goal in this game. And so they win by one. Um, and, you know, the, the past defense for the Jaguars has been struggling as of late. And that's where, you know, you kind of look at the other side with Herbert and you think about the weapons that he has. I think Mike Williams is still questionable um, it, as far as suiting up. I don't know what his status is right now, but we know that they've been doing more of a, you know, 10 yard and closer to the line of scrimmage type of offense. The deep passing and things of that nature is supposed to that we saw in Herbert's rookie year has has not been there. So maybe the Jaguars are able to play a little bit more press and a little bit closer um, to the line of scrimmage, which would probably help them out, knowing that their secondary has struggled on deep passes. And to that to that point as well, you know, the run defense has shored up um, as well towards the end of the season. And look what they did at Derrick Henry. Now, I know people will say that the Jaguars, you know, they play in the weak division of the AFC South. They have not played anybody, and this is going to be a true test. But this is also, you know, we got two quarterbacks who are going to be playing in the playoffs for the first time um and when we look at that you know not to say that the lights are going to be too big but like this is the first time that Herbert and Lawrence will be on that type of a stage so I think that this ends up being a sloppy game you know it's at uh 47 and a half is what I'm looking at I do like kind of like the under there um even though we have kind of two explosive teams when we look at on paper from an offensive standpoint but the defenses I think are good enough to kind of help keep this number down and and you know just have weird things happening, especially in that first half where we're seeing a lot more punting than scoring, um, which I think people will be um, leaning on. I was just looking at where the bets are coming in. We got around 60% of the bets that are coming in on the Chargers, uh, 55% of the money coming in on the Chargers. Um, let's just ride the story with the Jaguars. Peterson's been in this role before with the Eagles uh, magic that he had, um, you know, back in 2018. And and I just I just like things that have shaped up for them as opposed to on the Chargers side. I agree with you on every account. Everything you said, I want to like just rubber stamp that because I've got the Jags favored in this game. Don't know how I feel about that, but I do. Yeah. Um, not by a small amount. It's 3.8 points. What could go wrong by being yeah. heavy, heavy on the Jags here? And I talked about this on Monday where I had at that point ruled Mike Williams out because uh, there were anecdotes about it. he couldn't walk to the bus. I was like, OK, he's not going to play. Sounds like he will. Uh, he didn't practice either Tuesday or Wednesday, which means I guess to me that says he's at least banged up. But I wanted to see, you know, what this what, what my numbers would say if I put Mike Williams in there. And it still has this game as being a field goal favor for the Jaguars. So. Even when I make that change, I saw the Jags favor. I also saw the under as being uh, the better option here. The wind speed has gone up throughout the week. It was around four miles per hour initially. It's now nine miles per hour for that game. So I've got the total under there as well. And I think it's because the Jags will probably be able to move the ball on the ground here, whereas they couldn't against Tennessee. But Tennessee is a much better rush defense than the Chargers are. So I think... We'll see ETN be more effective here. I think uh, we'll see the Jags be able to move the football overall offensively. And I don't have a lot of faith in this offensive coaching staff for the, the Chargers yet, even if they have Mike Williams to be hyper efficient and efficient enough to, you know, beat a decent Jags team on the road. So we're fully aligned here. I think that both uh, the Jags are the right side and the under is the right side here. The under uh, I didn't take initially on Monday because it was at 47. Now it's up to 47 and a half. I think there is enough value there to take that as well. So we are fully aligned on Jags Chargers. And what has ever gone wrong with having agreement on a Chargers game in the year 2022? I guess it's oh, 2023. So maybe all. we can uh, get in out there. You know, maybe that'll help right. us a little bit. Yep. Nothing at all. Uh, no, this, but this is obviously the, one of the more exciting matchups on the slate just because of the, yeah. you know, we got a, a future the future quarterback, the future, whatever you want to say with Herbert or Lawrence. And we'll see who's able to uh, who get, get the better of the other. Yeah. I, I kind of hope that I can just re remove the financial aspect of this game. Like I have the bets out there, but I kind of hope I can just enjoy yeah. it regardless and not, not sweat too much. Rooting at Justin Herbert typically is not super fun, but I've had to do it <laughs> a lot this year. So I'm yeah. used to it by this point. Let's move now to the Sunday games. Talk about the Giants at the Vikings. You got the Vikings as three point favorites of FanDuel Sportsbook. Total is 48 and a half. And we did just see this matchup 
a couple weeks ago. Uh, anything in that game that stands out to you, Ryan, as you try to analyze the rematch here? Yeah, so this is one where, yeah, I mean, I'll probably hate myself for it, but, like, I, I am all in on the Vikings. In, in the <laughs> I, I love what Brian Dable has done with this team. I, I You know, I, he deserves all the credit in the world. He deserves to have the odds where they are um, as coach of the year. Um, because I, you know, I took the Giants under uh, team total to start the season. I was hammering that um, and, you know, was made to look like a fool. Uh, the Vikings, though, when we're talking about this three point spread, which, you know, I, I don't even know how it's at three because Vegas is like begging for a push in this matchup. Like I expect it to be <laughs> three and a half. So it, it just makes no sense to me. But I'm willing to say that the Vikings and all the one score games that they've been in this year in a home playoff game matchup, knowing, you know, what happened when they were in a home playoff game matchup with Stefan Diggs and the miracles and magics that can happen at their stadium uh, the, to get the three po- or lay three points there. Totally fine with it. Um, the percent of the money that is coming in on the Giants is at, is just egregious to me. 93% of the money there um, with only 52% of the bets coming in on the Giants, which basically says to me that like all the all the sharp money is, is coming in on the Giants. And, you know, I guess I'm, I'm willing to be in that 7% that's going to fade them. Um, they have they have explosive weapons. They proved before. Like, we, let's go back. I mean, I'm, I'm not willing to put hard on dollars on Daniel Jones in the playoffs, um, especially with the way the Vikings defense can play. And they've been in games where they, they've kind of proven to us that they you know, do belong. Yeah, it does. You know, it does leave a bad taste in our mouth. The last game that they played, you know, on the road when stuff was meaningful in Lambeau um, and and absolutely laid an egg there. Uh, But this Giants team as well, like they've they've laid some donuts in the past, too. And when we're talking about, yes, Kirk Cousins, yeah, he can turn the ball over. We do love that it's at a 330 slate and not primetime Kirk Cousins that we're getting. Um, but, you know, we're, we're going to see what Saquon can do. We're going to see what this offensive receiving core can do because I'm not buying into them uh, whatsoever. I'm um, the secondary for the Vikings, you know, like Patrick Peterson and, and the rest of these guys. They've 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 been stout as of as of late. Um, so getting three points at home with the Vikings when the public wants to take the Giants on the road, Daniel Jones, invest your money in him. Like I'll just leave that as it is, and I'll I'll ride with the Vikings yet again, who to me are are just the better team and had been all. Season. Yeah, for me, I think that this game is is very interesting because I don't really know how to read it. I thought that, you know, I talked on Monday about how like you can't use vibes to to judge where you want to bet, but you can use vibes to try to predict where the market will go. And I thought the, the vibes around the Vikings were so bad that we'd see movement in the Giants favor. Um, we have not seen that yet. It has been hanging at three the entire time. Now, the juice on three has changed a lot. It was um, it was like minus 120 on plus three at one point, I believe. And that is down to um minus uh 108 so we have seen some movement on three but not off of three and honestly if it's stuck there that long i wouldn't be shocked if it does stay there i kind of thought we'd see this get to two and a half and it hasn't yet so i find that somewhat surprising personally uh maybe yeah. it means people are like you skeptical of daniel jones and uh or you know maybe fan just fan will just think they have the right number uh hanging that one at three i think this is a stay away for me so i'm gonna i'm just gonna you know uh let this let the chaos unfold for this game i did have no, no desire to bend the vikings anymore i've ridden that roller coaster far too many times and just don't deal with it anymore so i think that i will root for your ticket at the vikings minus three i think the the total in this game is also interesting it's 48 and a half seems a little high to me i I feel like I can see the path to an over because we saw this mm-hmm. game a couple weeks ago. I can see the path to an over, but 48 and a half for two offenses that are not super explosive. I know neither defense is very good either, but they're not super explosive on offense. So it feels high to me. Any read for you on the total here? Yeah, I, I love total. Um, because uh, I, I love the over on the total. Um, yeah. Just the way that the Vikings play at home. Yeah. Um, mm. And you know the the Giants could could fall into to weird stuff there. I do think that you know if you're taking the over there, you do have to consider talking yourself into how the Giants get to 17. Um, I think that's that's a number there at uh, what is it 47 and a half because I, I do think that the the Vikings can easily put up four scores at home. Um, I think this is an absolute 
stellar matchup for Justin Jefferson. People are sleeping on him. Like his number is 95 and a half on the FanDuel Sportsbook. He's plus 110 to score a touchdown. Like he hasn't done anything in a couple of weeks and people are for, forgetting about that. Grant, albeit he didn't play the full week 18 game against the Bears. Um, and this was the TJ Hawkinson game a couple of weeks ago. But this this just has Justin Jefferson just absolutely going bananas um in this wild card matchup to me written all over it i don't know who on the secondary thinks that they're going to be able to stop him i think that he's been in Kirk cousins ear for the past couple of weeks and they know that they got to get him involved um and that's just going to make this offense so so explosive so i i see them getting the four scores um so yeah i think the giants you know has to convince me that they can get to 17 but i do i do like it just from that standpoint of we know that there's explosive plays that can happen on both sides yeah, you mentioned uh, the TJ Hawkinson game, 15 targets for him in that game. Justin Jefferson also got 14. So uh, <laughs> they funneled targets, to their studs, which you love to see from a DFS perspective. Um, it's also interesting to note for your bet that uh, the laying the three points and taking the over, those are correlated bets uh, because right. if they cover the three, that's, that implies there'll be more points in the game. You can same game parlay those at FanDuel. I will note that FanDuel is not stupid. They know that those two markets are correlated. So it's plus 211 to get uh, Vikings minus three and the over 48 and a half. So you're not getting a discount. You're not catching them sleeping it, with regards to that. So keep that in mind. Uh, you are paying a price to get the correlated bets, but it is nice to know that both those are tied together. Let's talk about the other Sunday, another Sunday game here, uh, the Ravens and the Bengals. I spelled Bengals wrong on the card. Good job, Jim. But the Bengals are eight and a half point favorites here. Total is uh, 40 and a half in this game. And the reason that spread is now eight and a half is Lamar Jackson did not practice on Wednesday, which means he is very likely to sit once again, so we have Tyler Huntley here. I assume it's Huntley, but he was also throwing left-handed during practice on Wednesday, which seems weird. Not what you want to see entering a playoff game. So can left-handed Tyler Huntley or Anthony Brown keep this game close enough to cover an eight and a half point spread? He's ambidextrous, Jim. What do you want? Yeah, from like you can make it work. There was a pitcher in baseball who um, was like signing with his left hand once. He said, yeah, I'm, amphi I'm, I'm amphibious. And whenever, whenever the word ambidextrous comes up, I think of that. And I'm, I'm always like frightened. I'm going to say amphibious instead. It's like my biggest <laughs> fear as a speaker. Oh my goodness. That is amazing. Um, shout out, to, shout out to those baseball players yes. making all the money, but not yes. as smart. Um, <laughs> no, I, uh, eight and a half is too big of a number. I mean, I, you know, if Anthony Brown's the starter, then so, so be it. I guess it's fair. But like this, this team just rested eight starters ish la last week, you know, and I think that's what people are lending their hat on. And also it's a week 18 matchup. So, you know, the fact that these two teams are meeting a week later is, n is really not the same thing, especially if we get Tyler Huntley. Um, when we look at John Harbaugh's record, you know, in, in the postseason, I mean, granted that, you know, you got Lamar Jackson and we had Flacco on a Super Bowl run and things of that nature, but, you know, he's going to coach this team up. Um, and on the defensive side of things, you absolutely love what the Ravens have been doing. Um, you know, Marlon Humphrey and, and Marcus Peters and those guys, like they've gotten action on Joe Burrow before. So I think that this game shapes up. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm willing to take the eight and a half here. I'm willing to take the under as well in this game. Like I do think this is going to be a defensive matchup. Um, and I am concerned about the Bengals offensive line. Um, you know, Collins had been hurt a couple weeks back. I know uh, there's there was another offensive line injury that just happened in yeah, Alex Kappa. Yeah. Yeah. And so like and then when you're thinking about it, like just from an overall mindset, like the fact that these two teams just played and everything was made, you know, I love the Bengals. I, I, lo I love Joe Burrow. I love everything that they're about. But they made such a fuss about not getting a home playoff game and everything right. going into that. And, you know, woe is us and the league is out to get us. And now we, they have this home playoff game. And are you able to back it up from an eight and a half number? You know, we'll see. I'm, I'm willing to just take those points with the Ravens and say that they kind of come out here and, and, are a little, and are a little stagnant. You know, we have seen this happen with this offense at times um, through, through the course of the season. So, um, if, if Huntley is playing and that's the caveat that I will say, I'm willing to get this eight and a half number now because it will change if, if Anthony Brown is named the starter. Um, and maybe they're already trying to kind of baking that in, but to me, it just feels like too many, too many points there. Uh, percent of bets, uh, on Ravens is 26 right now, but 52% of the money is coming in on the Ravens. So there are some sharp people who are willing to take that number as well. Um, 
and we'll see if the Bengals can can uh, keep the magic going from a, a season prior. To Do you year. want to lock that in now, or are you holding off until you get a better read in the quarterback situation? No, I'm willing. I'm willing to lock it in now. Um, okay. I mean, I, I still think for you know for whatever it's worth. I mean, th- this is a schemed offense, right? Like you you lose Lamar Jackson, you get Tyler Huntley, who kind of plays the same way. You lose Lamar. At, at least you know you lose Tyler Huntley. It's Anthony Brown, and he didn't look great last week. But they do have another week, and they're game planning against the same team. So maybe there's things that happen through those four quarters where they're able to get him involved. Also, you're talking about getting the likes of Mark Andrews and J.K. Dobbins back, right. who did not play last week. So it might just be a whole different offensive scheme where they just just try not to have him um, pass the ball as much. And we've seen this with the Tennessee team when they were playing, you know, got like a Malik Willis um, who is not a great passer. So what do we need to do? Oh, we just need to get the ball to Derrick Henry 30 plus times and let that ride. So this could just be a, a, a rushing team. Granted that it's Anthony Brown and we still, you know, have a defense that I think is pretty solid to help keep the, keep the number down, keep this close um so so yeah i'm willing to take it now knowing that if it is tyler huntley i think that this is just a a discrepancy of a line across the board yeah and again the the two bets you mentioned uh the plus eight and a half and the under both are correlated together so again those uh make sense if you want to pair them in a same game parlay again you're not getting a discount uh keep that in mind uh but they are correlated together with fewer points being implied there the thing that's interesting for me with the Bengals is i think you could view the complaining about the lack of or the way the NFL structured things to be one of two ways. One thing it could be their focus was dispersed last week. And that's why they, I think, underperformed a bit, at least offensively mm-hmm. in that game. You could pitch it that way. And also, like, there was talk uh, about sitting out that game, like like sitting starters in that game. Like they had asked Joe Burrow about it and he had said, Hmm. you know, we talked about it, decided not to. And I was like, okay, that's kind of odd because I had I had uh, the Bengals spread last week. And I was like, oh, that's a little little scary. They were talking about this because it means that their focus is not on this game. So it could mean they're in line for a bounce back this week. But also, I don't know. Um, I've got no firm read on that. So it could work one of either way. But um it's a it's an interesting game for sure. I'm still high in the Bengals. I did I talked on Monday about their Super Bowl future. Uh, that is um, still plus seven fifty, despite the fact they are now more likely to win this game with no Lamar Jackson. So you can get eight to one some places. I would mention that, uh, but I did take that at eight to one. Uh, where I was able to get it, so I still think that's a a viable place to look right now. What are the bets do you like across a wild card weekend, Ryan? Um, let's see if there are, you know, any, I should say, cause it's a small slate. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, you know, we'll talk about the other two or what games do we have? Well, other two games on Saturday and Sunday. So yeah, the 49ers, I mean, even as it currently stands right now, let me make sure. Cause I'm actually it's uh, nine and a half right now, nine and a half. Okay. Mm-hmm. So like the fact that it opened seven and a half, six and a half some places like i mean that kind of you know is is worrisome that it's already got up to nine and a half ten but i mean this is this san francisco team is like they're, they're just so good like it's just not being talked about enough and i and i get it in you know second game of the year brock purdy starting for him the second game uh i i was not on san francisco bandwagon at all but like you can't snip you can't like sneeze at five and oh um and what he's been doing with this team and the fact that they you know this is just such a systematic team that it's like yeah you know we can draft trey lance even though we have jimmy g oh trey lance gets hurt okay jimmy g just go back out there all you did was just play in a super bowl for us and you know had the lead and we should have won the game but Patrick Mahomes uh and then you know we have Jimmy G again and then oh we'll just take you know Mr. Irrelevant Brock Purdy and we know we'll just ride with things but we trade for Christian McCaffrey we have our defense uh the defense is probably as healthy as it's been you know over these past two years um so you know and the Seahawks they they just were playing an emotional uh roller coaster against the Rams to get into the playoffs as it stands and you know that for as much as Geno Smith has, has again made a name for himself in this league and what a great story he is and shout out to him for getting his a million dollar incentive for uh, what he was able to do on a snaps uh, basis for this season. Um, it is still Geno Smith and this offense is just not 
they're just they're just not doing the things that they were doing at the beginning of the season. Tyler Lockett's been banged up. He's pretty much playing with one hand. DK Metcalf like is pretty much just a step away from being on a milk carton. Like I don't even know what what's going on with him this season. Uh, you know, and and no other real weapons outside of that on the on from the passing game. And you do have Kenneth Walker, but we know how stout this 49ers run defense is. I I love getting the points um with with San Francisco and this could really just they could take this game um to two touchdowns and we wouldn't be surprised the bills game too was also interesting i mean we're gonna have Skylar thompson yet again here um and as you, we talked about last week and before um with the kansas city chiefs for instance when you're talking about playing with their food quote unquote like the bills do not do that no. and you know i think if there's so not to even put it in a slight but like just the fact that like demar hamlin is released from the hospital and this is a home game for them home playoff game against a divisional rival like I, I think there's a non-zero chance that they bring DeMar Hamlin out onto the field in this game get yeah. that crowd rocking knowing what happened last week uh with that team and like they could just come out here and just really just be like you know what even though we're we got two touchdowns on this team even though we're controlling the game like we understand what the matchup is we understand what our goal is to get to the super bowl and we're not letting up in any way shape or form because we know when we you know if we need to play against kc and it's going to be at a neutral setting we have to be willing to put up 35 40 points so let the offense go out there and do their thing against the miami dolphins team that really is just trying to you know save face there so the 13 points laying with that seems like a, a large number but i'm willing to take that um based off of everything that i know the bills need to do um in order to get on track to be a Super Bowl contender. Yeah, the Bills mindset is why I do like the over in that game too. It's 43 and a half right now. That shot back down after the Scholar Thompson news. It was down at 42 and a half, I believe, at one point yesterday. So it has gone back up a point. But I've got this at uh, 46.3. So still some value in the over there. And it is in large part fueled by the Bills mindset of, you know, bleep you. You know, we're up right. 21 points. Who cares? Um, we're going to keep right. chucking it because they can't run. So why not? Just keep right. chucking it. Yeah, they're they're um, running is passing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so I think that that same mindset applies to the total in that game as well. As I mentioned, we'll talk about the Bucks and the Cowboys coming up on Monday. We'll have Ryan back for that uh, once again to break down that game in full. Talk about the spread. Talk about some props. And uh, we'll see how that one plays out on Monday. But that is all that we have here for today. We are back once again tomorrow. Brandon Gadula will swing by. He's going to talk about his favorite player props across a wild card weekend. We'll have that up on the Covering the Spread podcast feed tomorrow and over on the FanDuel YouTube page. If you are not yet subscribed, please do so and if you like what you hear leave us a rating and review ryan good luck to you across wild card weekend tell trevor thank you for his insights once again and we'll talk to you on monday to break down bucks cowboys can't wait to get after it with you jim good luck everybody all righty find ryan on twitter at ryan alexander underscore w i am on twitter at jim sonnes j-i-m-s-a-n-n-e-s want to thank you all for tuning in good luck to you tonight with any nba nhl bets we'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down the props across Wild Card Weekend. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 